Hello, in this video I'm going to be explaining all about batch sizes, epochs, iterations, and training. So in the last video we trained our own model in YOLO v5 and I mentioned batches, epochs, and stuff like that. So in this video I'm going to be giving an analogy and explanation of what these things are. So in this case my analogy is going to be a person who makes cookies or caters them or sells them or whatever. So in this case, let's just say, all right, so we're going to have a batch size. So batch is equal to eight. Then we're going to have, let's just say we have epochs, which is also equal to, um, let's, let's just say five epochs. And this is, then we have a data set, data set which is equal to 16 all right so now that we have this um so we know that a batch of cookies will have eight cookies inside of it because it's a batch size of eight so here we have a tray which is one batch and here we have three four five six all right that's eight we have eight of these and now our data set is 16 and we need to have at least 16 cookies, which means we're going to have to make one more batch over here. This would mean that we have two iterations since we have two batches to fill the data set of 16 images. So this would all be counted as one epoch or in this case, one order. So this would be one order. All right. And so now in the in case of training this first batch to the first customer would be pretty terrible in this case the loss rate would be high in this case loss means that it for example uh, for a mask detector loss means it either wouldn't detect a person would have a mask or it would say a person with a mask is not wearing a mask basically it would get it wrong its detection would be wrong so here most likely these cookies since this is a, it's first time to make these cookies they're probably going to be very terrible either they're going to be too sweet or they're going to crumble a lot and so we only have a data set of 16 right here so we wouldn't have to do that many epochs to get good at making these cookies so if we gave these cookies to five people two three four five these are people here almost all of them four or five people let's just say a hundred percent 100% would be unhappy. They wouldn't like these cookies. It wouldn't be that good. But for my second epoch, most likely out of those five people, at least, or right here, out of those five people, one of them would like it. So then there'd be an 80%. 80% of the people would not like the cookies. And on our third epoch, here, And this is like in a perfect scenario. Here, 60, uh, two people would like the cookies, but 60% would still be unhappy. And then so on and so forth. So, but this only goes for so long. And I'll show an example in a second. On a fourth epoch, it might go down to 40. And then 20. But once it gets to around 20%, it won't go down to 0%. That's usually not a thing in training. It'll usually be 99 point something. It'll never be 100%. But usually in this, for example, in TensorBoard, the graph would start to steep out like this. It would only go like this for so long. So it'll most likely from 20%, realistically, you'd probably go down to 19, 18, 15, or so on. That's how low it would go. So now, let me give another example of how to calculate your iterations. So it's very simple. So if, for example, we have a data set with um, 32 images and we have a batch size of 16, our iterations would still be 2. But if our batch size was 8, for example, then it would be 4 iterations. So then you kind of get that. So now, if you wanted to do training for any model, you would understand how to configure your batches and how to make it so that you get um, your iterations right. Usually when training, you want to get like uh, a whole number for your iterations or as close as you can to that. So now you know how you would be able to do that. And for epochs, usually to figure out how many epochs you need, 
you look at the tensorboard graph and you see around how long or how many epochs it would take it would show you here like uh, zero epochs 500 uh, 1000 and, and so on so you would find out around when it starts when it starts sloping like this or when it starts like flattening out that's when you know that it's like at the at a good point to like end the training so if you want to train as fast as possible you just look at the tensorboard graph and you just look at when it flattens out and that's when that's how many epochs you would need so that's how you configure your training so this was a pretty short video explaining batches epochs and data sets and yeah that's pretty much it make sure to like and subscribe and thanks for watching